here on this program. And uh, I see for the first time our, our guest in studio, an eight-year veteran of Major League Baseball, but the most respected uh, throwing coach in Major League Baseball and the NFL. Tom House is here on the Rich Eisen Show. Good to see you, Tom. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you here. Uh, before you get started, Brockman, go ahead and lay on Tom House what you told me earlier today. Go for oh, it. Oh, man, when I was in uh, Little League, so this was early 90s, uh, I had the book that you had co-written with Nolan Ryan about how to how to pitch and all the exercises and stretches and and things to do grips on certain uh, on certain pitches like and I was kind of my guide because I was a pitcher uh, back in the day and is that why he's not playing anymore? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, how far did you go? How far did you go? I mean, I, I played a year in college. There you go. So well, the um, really cool thing is is that that book is the number one selling pitching a manual in the history of pitching books. And obviously it wasn't because of me. It was because it was Nolan Ryan's fastball is what we were talking about. So it was actually one of the better books. And it's from what I remember, Ted Williams book on hitting and that book on pitching are the one and two in baseball instruction. Fantastic. You got, you got a good one in there. It's great. I loved it. And so, uh, but you don't have it for him, no. I don't uh, have it with me. No. It's, it's probably it's, somewhere it's in an attic somewhere. somewhere. in my mom's house. <laughs> okay, very good. All right, around. very good. Um, so in your eight-year career, uh, I, I got to ask you about this moment before we get to the here and now, what's going on with you and your career and the people that you have been counseling. Um, is it true you caught the Hank Aaron home run ball in Atlanta? You've done your to homework. Break yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Um, you were in the bullpen warming up? I was in up? the bullpen, yeah. It was a... Basically, it took a year to get to that point because mm -hmm. he started chasing the record in 73. And it was a big to-do that here we are sneaking up on, um, you know, a, a legend. Mm -hmm. uh, and 714 was the magic number. And as it turned out on that given day, uh, we drew straws to see where we would be in the bullpen because the, the Atlanta Bray bullpen in Fulton County Stadium was behind the left field fence. So I got the straw that put me out to left center. Um, Buzz Capper was the one that had a dead center. And as luck would have it, um, Henry hit it. I was standing there. Everybody talks about what a great catch it was. <laughs> if I would have stood still, it would have hit me in the forehead. So there was wow. nothing magic there. What do you mean you were drawing straws? What are you talking about? Well, because um, the ball mm -hmm. was going to be worth a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, and I think... By game time, uh, the word I heard was 25 grand. That uh, I think Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, had come through the clubhouse before the game started, and he wanted the ball and Henry to come out and do a show with him in Las Vegas. And 25,000 was the number I heard. And remember, in 1974, minimum big league salary was 12,000. And obviously, I was way toward that mm -hmm. number than the other guys on the team. But the bottom line was, uh, or the good news was that the, that was the highlight of my major league career. <laughs> but the bad news was that was the highlight of my major league career. <laughs> so, Ouch, come so on, man. Perfect. But so uh, so Sammy Davis Jr. was strolling through the, the clubhouse oh, yeah, before the, the game? It was a big to-do. Uh, it was like a mini circus wherever we, went, wherever we went. In fact, it was the first time I saw a ball player that couldn't ride the bus with a team and walk in to the hotel when we were on the road. Mm -hmm. Remember, it was there were death threats. There was a lot of hoopla of going around it. Um, but the bottom line is, it was the the right guy hit the home run, and the right guy caught the home run. Well, you didn't sell it, did you? Did you really sell the ball? No. Okay. And if you watch the film on it, I actually caught it and ran it as fast as my little fat legs would take me into home plate. And there's pictures out there of me giving it to him while he was hugging his mother. And just to per put a perspective on it, I said, here it is, Hank. And he said, thanks, kid. I, I don't even know if he knew who I was. But <laughs> the, the, wow. the, the bottom line was it, it was uh, a big moment in my life, and mm -hmm. it was a, a friendship that lasted a long time. Uh, Henry always called me Tommy. And in... When I'm telling the big lie, it's actually true. Uh, Tom House here on the Rich Eisen Show. When did you first hook up with Nolan Ryan? When did that happen? Um, when I was with the Texas Rangers, it was my third or fourth year as a pitching coach. Mm -hmm. And the Rangers were the, kind of like the doormats of 
the American League at that time. Mm -hmm. And they brought together Bobby Valentine and Tom Grieve, where Bobby was the field manager and Tom Grieve was the general manager. And they were very aggressive with new ideas and asking for whatever it took. So they went to, they went to ownership when Nolan became a free agent with the Astros. And Bobby had played with Nolan when they were together in the Angels. And as it turned out, um, because we extended not just a, a money offering, but allowed him for the first time, his family could come to the ballpark, travel with him, very similar to what uh, Tom Brady is going through right now, where, uh, you know, at 45, he's got family issues that a 25 year old doesn't have. Mm -hmm. So as luck would have it, uh, Nolan shows up for what was supposed to be one year, and he ended up uh, staying nine, and he was a better pitcher in that time frame than any other time in his career. So n now that you you know you're working with Major League Baseball pitchers for as long as you've worked with them, and now NFL quarterbacks for as long as you've worked with them, is there a similarity between Tom Brady and Nolan Ryan that you can put out there on the table? Because we're seeing Brady do things in the NFL that we've never seen before. And Nolan, in many ways, was that guy in Major League Baseball as well. well Rich, you're really setting me up perfectly here. Well, that's what uh, I do for a living, Tom. <laughs> I, you know, I know what you do for a living. But I, mean, I, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can pitch as well. And I'm I appreciate more underhanded, it. just setting it up for you on a team. You know, I hit the crease between old school and new school. <laughs> yes. And Nolan was the first test baby with all the, the new research that we did with motion analysis, with ground force production, energy going into the arm, uh, which we need to talk about shoulders with your guys over here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we'll leave Del Tufo on the side for a moment, but Tom Brady, Tom Brady and Nolan Ryan have the but floor. If you, if you follow four basic principles, biomechanics, functional strength, mental emotional management, and nutrition and sleep for recovery, there's no reason an athlete can't do at age 45 what he did at age 25. And we proved it with the Texas Rangers and six of the 10 pitchers I had in that time frame pitched in their mid 40s. By the time I got around to Tom Brady, um, walking by Belichick's office one time when we had been out on the field throwing the football, mm -hmm. Belichick ca called us in and said, okay, tell me why I shouldn't trade Tom Brady, and at this time, I think Brady was 37, mm -hmm. 36. And I just said, well, Bill, the research shows that if Tom does what he's supposed to do, all those four things I just mentioned, which he does to the, you know, the, the T, there's no reason he shouldn't play until he's 45. And here we are. So Brady, what would you say listened to you all the way up until he was 42 and that was the end of that. I no, mean, he's still putting numbers up and he, no, I know that, but I'm just wondering. So, so Belichick said, okay, why he really asked you, why shouldn't I trade Tom Brady right yeah, now? Because the prevailing in my generation, mm -hmm. you were done as a pitcher at age 32, 33. Yes. We proved that that wasn't true because of what we had done with the Rangers. Uh, and the carryover was that when we got into football, um, I think George Blanda, uh, there were only two quarterbacks that were even productive into their 40s. Uh, and so we just took what we learned in baseball and put it in front of the quarterbacks. And quarterbacks, by the way, are a lot easier to work with than pitchers are. Is that so? I, I think they just have to be because of the volume of information they have to process and the time frame that uh, they have to do it in. They're quicker thinkers than most pitchers. Um, and if you're a quicker thinker, you're usually a quicker learner. Too. When did Tom Brady first get on your radar screen, Tom House? When did that happen? Um, I think 10 years ago now. Drew, Drew Brees was our first elite quarterback where we actually helped him with his shoulder rehab and um, where he wasn't ever supposed to be, to be able to throw again. We fixed him. Chargers going into the Saints Good. pretty much That's back then. awesome. Right? Okay. And uh, what we found out of that quarterback fraternity is really a small little fraternity. Mm -hmm. And we fixed Drew, and he uh, started spreading the word that we kind of knew what we were doing. 
You, you fixed him, all right. He's going to the Hall of Fame for his ballot. I um, mean, remember, I had the easy job. All he did was talk. He had to do all the work. Of course. But the bottom line is, credibility with him gave us credibility with other quarterbacks, mm -hmm. and pretty soon uh, it grew into one of one of the companies that I'm a part of called 3DQB, mm -hmm. and 3DQB right now probably deals with 25 or 30 of the collegiate quarterbacks. Uh, JJ McCarthy from. Uh, Michigan doing great work on him Tom um, great work it was it was easy it was very easy with him mm -hmm. but that's kind of how we grew into it what about Josh Allen so much about him talked about coming out of Wyoming not so accurate and you can't teach accuracy in the league that you're throwing motion it's your throwing motion and so on and so forth well, what work did you do with the guy who right now is uh, the odds on MVP favorite even though it's just one game in the season well we have these metrics that uh, are a result of all the data and the research we've done. Mm -hmm. And he fit all the metrics. And What metrics can you, what do um, you think? Just the mechanical, mechanical efficiency, mm -hmm. functional strength, his ability to accelerate and decelerate muscles efficiently, efficiently his capacity to um, make decisions, um, the zone that everybody talks about. I'm sure you've been in the zone mm -hmm. in your job. Uh, I was in the zone maybe once or twice in nine years, but it's when thinking is inversely proportional to the stimulus of the environment. Josh was one of those guys that the crazier things got, uh, the calmer he became. How do you measure that, Tom? How does one measure something oh, like that? Oh, that's really cool about what, I, like I said, I hit the crease between old school and new school, uh -huh. where in the old days you just kind of had to guess and, it, and an experienced coach could have a feel. Sure. Well, we actually have the instruments now, uh, star profile, whatever it might be, to where we can tell you how a kid thinks, how he processes. You learn to learn, you learn, and you learn, re learn to relearn mm -hmm. how he processes that type of stuff. What his personality is he a guy that can move a room? Is he not going to be able to help somebody in the huddle? Uh, all the pieces that we had on Josh. Um, indicated, even though he came from a small school, that he would adjust uh, not only physically but mentally to the game, which he's proven. And again, I didn't have personal hands-on with him. Uh, John Beck and Adam Data with 3DQB mm -hmm. had the initial go with him. But, but again, we've touched a whole lot of quarterbacks in the last 10 years. Tom House here on the Rich Eisen Show, Throwing Guru, and we'll get to the Mustard app in a second because I know that's a a new venture for you. You want to get out there in front of the Rich Eisen Show audience, and I'm thrilled that you are here. Um, so uh, which young quarterback in mid-20s right now do you think, I guess, or would you say all of them, if they follow your principles, can play as long as Brady? Or is he really an outlier, Tom? I mean, you got Mahomes, you got all these guys who are just lighting it up. Burrow, Herbert, so on. Allen's one of them. Lamar's another. I mean... It may take a unique personality to want to play till they're 45. Right. Um, one of the things when, when you've got 350 million guaranteed, hmm. your motivation to play the game until you're 45 might not be what it was for a, either a, a Nolan Ryan or a Tom Brady. But um, just pure numbers, there's a, a bunch of them out there. The kid down well, uh, with the Chargers, uh, he's one of those kids that, Herbert. Herbert. Uh, could his physical makeup and his mental emotional makeup, he's one of those guys who should have no trouble if he wants to, to play until he's 45. What about Mahomes? What do you make Mahomes, uh, if he can learn to stay in the pocket a little bit more, <laughs> the, the more you run around, I mean, you think about someone the size of TJ, your 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 gatekeeper here. Six three, right? TJ, six three, coming at you. Is six that three, that's it. Okay, well, I'm saying. Add a hundred pounds Big to him, and that's chasing you around, trying to tear your head off. Yes, it's a little different physically, but if he could stay upright, there's no reason at all that Mahomes couldn't play till he was forty. So, what are the four principles? Once again, hit it for me. Okay, once if again. you were. A, a scout or a coach yes, sir. looking at a quarterback yes, sir. or any athlete for that matter. It's his biomechanical efficiency. How well does he move doing his skill? Mm -hmm. It's his functional strength. Does he have the accelerator, accelerator, decelerator capacity to, to be balanced with large throwing totals or pitching totals? Mm -hmm. um, what is his mental emotional makeup? 
Can he handle the stress and anxieties of being a profile guy? Mm -hmm. um, does it bother him when he gets booed by 40,000 people? Or what? <laughs> uh, it didn't bother me. I didn't hear my last name in Boston for three years. <laughs> <laughs> for all you Boston fans. Or house became a four-letter word. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, very good. Basically, went now pitching for the Sox, number 29, Tom. Boo. Boo. <laughs> Fantastic. So, and then again, the, uh, we've learned more about recovery and the value of... Sure. Um, that's what know, Brady, he counsels that all the time. Everything you read about him, he lives to the nth degree. So if you want to pay that price, um, that's what he does. And it's a price to pay. There's no it, question it is. about it. Uh, especially when you've got family and mm -hmm. kids growing up and all the pressures. So, yes, it can be done, but it takes dedication. And the one thing I feel, if I don't, uh, it'll allow me to share. Please. The one thing I've seen with the superstars that I've run across they have this inherent genetic predisposition to get better every day. Every day of their life, they're looking to get better by 1%, 2%. Not the 20% that people think you need, but 1% better every day. Their dedication to excellence is off the charts. What's the Mustard app? The Mustard app is telling everything we just talked about, mm -hmm. uh, everything we would just put on the table for your listeners to hear, Costs about 30000 a weekend for the elite guys. Mm. Um, what we are trying to do with mustard is to democratize all that the elite get. Um, put a cell phone in the hands of a mom or a dad that has a 12-year-old son or daughter. Have them be able to film their movements or their skills. Mm -hmm. Send it to the cloud and come back and get virtually the same analysis that the big boys get when they come to work with us over a weekend. And it's turning out to be one of the best things I've ever done. I say me, but we're surrounded with, a, I really got some great people I'm working with. We've actually got an app that is free where a mom or a dad of a 12 year old or a 13 year old can get the same efficacy of information and instruction that our elite athletes do. Well, I've got, uh, I'm, I'm downloading the app literally as soon as you leave the studio. I've got an 11 year old son that just started playing a little travel ball. Uh, when he picked up a ball with his left hand, I'm like, jackpot. Hello. Because I'm like, you know, Jamie Moore pitched to what, 49s? Or 49. Your, your, yeah, everybody guys? talks about the Nolan Ryan, but we, you know, you can do it with the, the average athlete too. Well, I mean, so, um, and it's funny, he came home last night, one of, the, one of his colleagues, on the fall ball team asked me, I guess as a catcher, asked him to throw a curve, and he said he threw a curve, and I just said, well, hold on a second now. Hold on a second. And I'm like, I've got, I explained to him who you are, and I'm like, I got Tom House on the show tomorrow. You want to throw it out there for any parents who have kids that are throwing right now, boys, girls, or what have you? What, what do you counsel for them? Okay. Prior to getting the mustard app, you, or after getting the mustard app. Before or after. Mm -hmm. uh, we know in today's world that kids pitch too much, they don't throw enough. So, so let your son throw anything, anytime, anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, a curveball was taboo when I was coming through the system. Mm -hmm. But we now know that thrown properly, a curveball is the easiest pitch on the arm. Get out of here. Uh, it's contraindicated, but that's what science is all about. When you can look at a delivery at 1,000 frames a second, and you can wireless EMG the stresses that go on on the arm when he does, but let me tell you about a left-hander that can throw a curveball. Mm -hmm. They pitch till they can't walk. Uh, no, I'm telling you, if, you can th if you're left-handed and you can throw a curveball, velocity is nice, but it's not necessary. So I think it okay. was uh, Sandy Koufax told me there's good curveball hitters, but nobody can hit a good curveball. And that's what carried me. Because my, my fastball sucked. But I did have a good curveball, and I could hit a Nats ass with it anywhere, <laughs> anywhere anytime you want it. And what it did was buy me the chance to have one good year, which I did, mm -hmm. and that one good year bought me seven more. <laughs> <laughs> so you just had my story, my life story in a nutshell right there. Tom House here on the Rich Eisen Show. Before I let you go, I would be remiss if I did not give you the floor on Shohei Otani and what we're seeing and your two cents on his throwing motion and how long do you think he can keep up what he is doing at the major league level, Tom House. Well, he's the only one in the history that did what Babe Ruth did, and he's doing it better. Um, not, you know, he's a top 10 pitcher and a top five hitter. Uh, it's, I don't know how he does it. He's a gifted athlete. 
but his his makeup also says that he'll be able to sustain it. Um, he's surrounded by um, a group that really takes care of him. All of, and he's a good kid, uh, so there's no reason physically that he can't do it. It's just how long does he want to do it, but he's special. He sure is, there's no doubt. Are you work, working with Arch Manning as well? Have you seen him yet? Tom? Arch, oh, the, the yeah. grandson? Yeah. Um, I think Adam and and Adam Jado and John Beck with 3D QBR. Okay. Um, I have not had hands on with him personally, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm trying to retire. I'm trying to trying to, to pull back, back off trying to pull and back. leave um, what I've done. Have the kids that are following me stand on my shoulders, not only with 3D QB with the with the National Pitching Association, mm-hmm. but all things that I've heard about uh, him is that he is he's the real deal. He's got the gene pool and all the advantage of how to and why from the from all the relatives. So a special case. Well, I, I, I asked about him not only because he is, you know, a Manning and so many people are paying attention, but the aforementioned T.J. Jefferson plans to retire on the rookie cards he's already bought, <laughs> even though he's still in high school. Yeah. So he's trying to... Is it, you got to stay ahead good, of the curve, good, Tom. I think it's a good investment, T.J. I think yeah, just got it just got he's a, he's a very projectable kid, and you realize that they start showing up at age 14 or 15, which is another thing that we have to deal with in today's world. These kids are projected to be college prospects or, you know, baseball prospects mm-hmm. at 12 and 13, which is another thing that messes not only the athletes' heads up a little bit, but the moms and dads. That, <laughs> oh, yeah. that, uh, you're, you're, a whole other story. Oh, yeah. That's what we'll have you back. We'll talk about it. Everybody should get the Mustard app. I'm literally going to download it during the commercial yeah. break as you walk Team, out, sir. Team Mustard. Dot com. Team Mustard.com. And Mustard Tom. is spelled M S T R D. Okay, very good. And uh, I appreciate that for all those out there. <laughs> I follow you on Twitter at Tom House, uh, and I appreciate you coming in here, Tom. First of hopefully many times, anytime you want to come in. I had a great time. I'll pal around with you anytime you want. Me. I love it. That's Tom House, everybody who can hit a curveball on an ant's ass. Write that one down, Chris, please. <laughs>